Welcome to From Betrayal to Breakthrough. I'm Dr. Debbie Silber. Today's guest is Rihanna Milne. And Rihanna is a certified global life dating and relationship coach, a number one best-selling author, a life and dating coach for the new docuseries Radical Dating, Finding Lasting Love Over 40, host of her radio show on BoldBraveMedia.com and podcast, Lessons in Life and Love, an educational speaker, licensed mental health counselor, and certified trauma and addictions professional in Delray Beach, Florida. She specializes in those who have had past childhood dating or relationship trauma and offers one-on-one VIP coaching and online virtual coaching programs for both singles and couples at lifeandlovetrainingacademy.com. Rihanna's free app, My Relationship Coach, offers many videos and articles and her five-star rated books, Love Beyond Your Dreams, Break Free of Toxic Relationships to Have the Love You Deserve, and Live Beyond Your Dreams from Fear and Doubt to Personal Power, Purpose, and Success addresses life transitions, personal transformation, and relationships with yourself and others. Rihanna's Facebook fan page is Coach Rihanna Milne, and her website is Rihanna Milne. Dot com And I can't wait for you to meet her. She's going to be sharing 10 adverse childhood events that sabotage future love. When you learn what they are, it's going to be so helpful because it's going to explain why you do what you do, why your partner is behaving a certain way, and how unless it's looked at and healed, it'll keep following you in every relationship you have. Buckle up, everyone. Grab a piece of paper and a pen. Ready? Here we go. I am so excited. Today we have Rihanna Milne with us and she's going to be sharing. She just, first of all, as far as relationships go, this is the woman who just knows so much about relationships and dating and trauma and like the good, the bad, the ugly, everything mm. having to do with relationships. So thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for asking me, Deb. I'm really happy to be here. Thank you. I just can't wait to get started. So one thing we're going to be talking about is how childhood dating and relationships, trauma, unconscious emotional triggers impact our adult life and our relationships. So that's one topic. And we're also going to get to what are the 10 adverse childhood events that sabotage future love? Mm -hmm. Let's just dive in. Let's just start with the first one. Okay. Well, it's really important that this topic is understood and it's really fairly new and cutting edge research. I did go for my triple master's in applied clinical and counseling psychology and was a therapist for 18 years, you know, but this was nothing I learned in my master's program. It wasn't until I had a relationship where the gentleman I describe as Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde which Dr. Jekyll is the one that everyone in society knows, charming, handsome, outgoing. You're the it couple, you know, everyone thinks, oh, what a great relationship. I want to be you guys, you know. And then Mr. Hyde, like the Broadway show, is a hidden personality type. And in the Broadway show or the movie, after you hear this topic today, you might want to watch that again with this in mind. He is the one that is the sociopath or psychopath. The difference between the two is the psychopath kills. And the sociopath has no remorse or care for your emotional well-being. They do what they want when they want. Yes, they're narcissistic. But so many people come to me and say, Rihanna, I'm with a narcissist. I say, well, you may be with also a sociopath. So, you know, it's narcissism is part of that, very much so. And funny, my recent radio show and podcast, Lessons in Life and Love, I just did three weeks of the toxic personality types that can break your heart. Because it takes me that long to go into the 14 different personality types. So they all do originate from people with childhood trauma. So let's go into that. And I want to advise your listeners to get a piece of paper and draw three columns. Because when we do this, some of you may choose to want to chat with me about it. I'm going to say, well, how many traumas came up for you? And in the three columns, you're going to want to put you or saying me at the first one. In the middle, you put partner. It could be a current partner or a partner that you really struggled with and you couldn't figure out why. And then the third column, put parents. And if I'm going through the traits and you know as a child, your mom or dad also went through this, put mom or dad down. Because all the research shows that childhood trauma does go through the generation. And this is not to pick out fault or invoke guilt for anybody. 
because the research also shows 89.9%, so 90% of us have at least one to three childhood traumas with many having more than that. You know, and I'm such a believer and you, you can't change what you're not aware of. So there's something so wonderful about let's see what it is so we can do something about it. Yes. And that's my one quote I use all the time. You can't change what you don't understand. And of course, you don't know what you don't know. And that's where I was. I didn't know about this stuff. Once I found it, I'm like, oh my gosh, the floodgates are opening. And that's why I put my programs together for people that have gone through this. It's like, okay, I got it. Now what do I do with it? So here we go. The 10 traumas. Keep in mind that you were a little person, young, you didn't know anything different, you know, all you knew was your family. Most people look back at their childhood and say, it was a really traumatic. There's a few problems here and there, but nothing traumatic. But they still call them traumas because they do come out as emotional triggers later in your adult life. So here we go. The first is if your parents had any addiction. We all think of drugs and alcohol, but there's also sex addiction. So if your parent was a cheater, porn, gambling, gaming, hoarding, spending, overeating, and workaholism. So there is, you know, 10 traumas right there, or 10 addictions right there that your parent might have been prone to. Right. How many people say, well, I didn't even think that that was an addiction, but I guess it is. Yes, absolutely. Second one is verbal abuse. Now we're all know the yelling, screaming, but that's even if you witness mom and dad yelling and screaming and they didn't scream at you. Or it's also if you never heard compliments, verbal accolades, like great job, hon, or even the words, I love you. Now, in my generation, our parents came from the depression, and my mom did not say those words. And I asked her, and she said, well, life was hard. We didn't have time for that. You know, everyone just worked to support the family. So she didn't do what she was not comfortable with for many years. I then I kind of taught her to say the words that it's important for your children to hear that. So later in her years, she did. But that is also part of verbal abuse. And again, this is something that I guess you just, with so many people, you just get used to. Well, that just didn't happen. And we grow to accept it thinking that that's normal. Well, that's what we call, quote unquote, your normal. Mm -hmm. So if then you become an adult woman and your guy came from a loving family and he says all the time, I love you, I love you. And you don't say it back because you're not used to it. You didn't hear it. There's going to be a problem Mm -hmm. because your childhood normal is not normal for your partner and is going to cause a risk. All right. Third is emotional abuse. We know that the typical types of emotional abuse, but even in the research, they said for those of us that were single moms, I was one that had to work, you know, and your kids come home at three o'clock, let themselves in, get their snack, do their homework. That's a form of emotional abandonment or emotional abuse. And who would think Because to us, we're just supporting our family. Okay. So uh, next one, physical abuse, rape, or molestation. Next one is abandonment. There's two types. There's fault and no-fault abandonment. So a no-fault abandonment would be a parent that goes off to war, a parent that dies early, or a parent that travels a lot due to their work because that's how they support their family. It's not their fault that they're gone, but it is occurring. So you still have feelings of abandonment deep down. The fault abandonment is like after a divorce, and let's say the father leaves the home and he promises to pick you up and is late or he blows off the weekend, or he does take you to the weekend house, but his girlfriend is there and he pays more time and attention with her or to the football games and you're just kind of sitting there. Mm -hmm. That's a fault abandonment where you don't feel he's very much involved. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next one is if you're part of adoption, foster care, or had to live with other adults because your parents couldn't take care of you. I have a client that says, well, Rihanna, what if I chose to live with another family because I hated being at home? Yes, that counts. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. You didn't want to go home to all the volatility. Next one is personal trauma. Trauma number seven is a big one, very common. This is either if you were bullied or remember not fitting in or not being good enough. So it could have just been at school. It could have been at home. uh, There, You could have been an overweight child, skinny and gawky child. There's a lot of different ways this can play out. I had a beautiful African-American girl in my office, had a lot of jealousy issues. She goes, no, my family was great. And then I came up with that one. She goes, oh my God, that's it. I was the only black girl in an all-white school. I never fit in. I always felt different. Right. It was never good enough. Okay, so that dynamic can play out in many different ways, trauma number seven, personal trauma. Trauma eight is sibling trauma. This is if your sibling got a lot of attention or accolades. They could have been more intelligent, more handsome or beautiful, 
more athletic, or they could have been born with a medical issue where mom and dad had to give them more time, but for some reason, they got all the time and attention or more accolades beyond more than you. And I see so many people feeling so guilty that they were jealous of the attention that they weren't getting because they're saying here their sibling has some sort of special need or challenge and they yeah. want to be supportive and they want to feel okay about their parents spending more time, but there's a jealousy there. And, and in reality, they probably did as children. They were trying to be supportive. But again, we're talking about unconscious emotional wounds. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So it's not like you're consciously aware I'm mad at mom and dad, and you could be because I give more time to my brother, but there's an understanding, even a small child would say, but my brother's sick Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it's okay. But the, still the abandonment, those deep wounds are still there. And that's what we're talking about. It's all unconscious that moves forward as it into your adult life. The next one is family trauma. This could be, and there's a longer list than 10, actually there's 18 but I don't have time to go into all of them. I mean, look what you're covering in the 10. I mean, this is I know. who hasn't had at least one of these. Exactly. Yeah. So one of the ones from the later list I bring into now number nine, which is family trauma and it's community trauma. So community trauma, look at everything that's happening in our communities with the school shootings, mass shootings, terrorism, loss of homes, whole communities by floods, fires, hurricanes mudslides, volcanoes, Mm -hmm. every type of mother nature activity is wiping out large communities and everyone is losing things, starting over. So that is devastating. When we're talking about family trauma, that could include a parent that was incarcerated, moving a lot. So the military families are moving every two to four years. That puts that child in new schools every time. It is really difficult for a young person to To go into a new school time after time after time. Absolutely. Um, Growing up in lack or poverty or growing up in a dangerous neighborhood. And that is very important. So family and personal trauma. Then trauma number 10 is a mental health issue in mom or dad. And again, my parents' generation, your Stu, Debbie, they didn't really go to psychotherapy. Mm. You know, that was like, no, nobody's going to go to a counselor in our family. It was mm-hmm. shameful. Yep. I remember my mom said that to me once because a boy stood me up like in eighth grade. And I said, I want to go talk to a counselor. And she said, nobody will be being a counselor in this family. And I said, well, I, and I'll grow up to become one. And, and I there you go. <laughs> <Showed her. laughs> yeah, it's amazing what successes come from our traumas. And and that's why I have a presentation even coming up successful in business, but struggling in love because that's my client, you know, very successful in business, but just can't seem to get love right. And they can't figure out why. And this is where I, I I always talk about your biggest crisis reveals your greatest gift. That's where it is. It's in that struggle. So what happens now? So now we see here are the 10 and what do we do? Okay, so I just went did a deeper a little bit on the mental health issues. There's mm-hmm. two that are most profound for people. One is borderline personality. That is that fast trigger anger uh, coming out of nowhere where you're feeling like you're walking on eggshells all the time. And bipolar, which is manic depressive. Sometimes people think, well, manic's the good one, that high happy, but not really if it's around a gambling or cheating spurge or eating or spending. That's a manic phase. And depression can come out as anger, emotionally checking out, or just extreme fatigue. So if you grow up with a parent with those kinds of issues, which they often got from their parents, this is the generational thing, then the person of high anxiety is always someone from childhood trauma. So someone that comes to me usually always has ongoing and higher levels of anxiety than most. So trauma stays stuck in the brain and the body. And as a clinical trauma professional, these are the things that I have to deal with to work with people. So how does this play out? Okay. So before we say, what do we do? Like, how do they play out? Because people say, okay, yes, I have these and I'm struggling in love. Where's the bridge? Okay. So let's go into some of the characteristics. Now there's 24 characteristics of that could play out. So I'm going to give you a few examples. So let's talk about lying. The little boy um, a man that lies all the time over stupid things like, why are they lying? Okay, this is that person that usually got physically beat when they did something wrong. So they learned lying as a coping mechanism and it became a skill. Geez, if I can lie and get away with this, then I won't get beat today. So they become very much an expert in trying to get out of trouble. 
and lying was what helped them as a little person. Survival. It's easy. Yes, it's all, they're all survival skills. Mm-hmm. People pleasing. That could be the little girl that grew up with the alcoholic mom. She was angry, yelling, so she would learn to overdo for her mom, cleaning the house, making the lunches for the siblings, you know, just doting on mom as much as she could just to keep peace in the house. So this woman grows up to be a people pleaser to her husband and to her family. She overdoes for everyone else, never says yes to herself. She does. She feels guilty. And then those ladies show up and say, you know, nobody loves me as much as I love them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She's so used to overdoing to get love. And she's exhausted. She's exhausted. Mm -hmm. She's burnt out and she's unhappy and she can't figure out why she's not getting this type of love back. Mm -hmm. So her boundaries are way loose. And we have to work with that. So everyone comes to me with their own different puzzle, you know, depending what their traumas were and then how we have to help heal them. One of the most dangerous is impulsivity. And that's that person uh, that can be really close to sociopathy. It's like, well, I suffered as a kid. I'm an adult now. I'm going to do what I want. I'm going to do it because I just want it. I deserve it. Now, you can say, I say, have the love you deserve. And I mean that in a kind and loving spiritual way. But this person that acts out impulsively does never think of their partner or the relationships. They just do what they want when they want. Now, what's the difference between that and a sense of entitlement? Is that the same thing? Same thing. Okay. Yeah. I want it and I'm going to do it anyway. Yes. And that impulsivity feels like there was a lot of lack as a child. So Let's say somebody grows up poor or you're always hearing the, the family struggling. Well, as soon as they make money, I want this because I want it and I can have it now. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's where, you know, spendaholics can come into play or people that always are buying the next new thing because they really want that. Um, hoarders usually grew up in lack or poverty and they things, you know, or love. And I also had a client, very interesting enough, came from a very wealthy home maids and servants and you know love was things she Mm. didn't have her parents love but things gifts were always given to her so she always had tons of things around her she probably was like 300 designer purses because they were the next thing that she felt love from so you know all these dynamics definitely come from the childhood pain that we have been through control that's a big one in relationships jealousy and control well jealousy comes from trauma number seven not feeling good enough And that's when you sometimes do control your partner to make sure they're going to stay with you. Or control could also be coming from a very volatile household where you had no control over the mom and dad fighting or the drug use or whatever was going on. You had no control in your life. You learned to micromanage your area. Um, These are people with OCD. So things have to be cleaned or lined up in order if they came Mm -hmm. from the house Um, or overly clean house. It could be one or the other, the opposite. And I just want to stop you right there. And I I hope everybody listening understands it really has a better picture of their actions and behaviors that they're doing now. Can you see where it's coming from? It's probably becoming very clear. Yes. Go ahead. Yes. So once now we got the aha, Mm -hmm. right? Now this is a journey. I describe it like a rainbow. At the one end, you're at the place of, I don't know what I don't know. Like, why is my guy doing this? Like, mm-hmm. I'm a great partner. I'm loving. I'm loyal. I'm, you know, we have a great relationship. Why was he, you know, having this secret life? Mm-hmm. That's what we don't know. And then when I start the journey with my clients, we start uncovering the childhood wounds. And then I know how to work with them. Like I said, it's a puzzle. And they do better than they slip. And then they do better than they slip. And then people ask me, Rihanna, like, why do I have to slip? Like, what, what is that problem? Well, the reason that you slip back is because the unconscious is so strong. We are fighting unconscious patterns for many years. And I just want to be clear. It doesn't excuse it. It doesn't make it okay. But at least we know what we're working with. Yeah. And then at the end, I do say there's a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Because once you become mindful, this is a very spiritual, mindful, conscious program. It's all about mindset mm-hmm. plus the healing of the brain and the body. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I teach him a special meditation and that does, you know, and it's proven in science. Everything I do is research-based. I'm mm-hmm. a learning nerd, mm-hmm. but, you know, meditation does lower blood pressure, cortisol levels, the anxiety and the depression, and then it increases the dopamine and serotonin levels of the brain. So meditation is essential for my clients mm-hmm. and they start really feeling the difference. We go into their diet 
vitamin therapy. None of my clients are on psychotropic drugs. They often mm-hmm. come to me. I'm on antidepressants. I'm on anxiety. I'm on this, I'm on that. I don't know. We're going to go holistic. Mind, body, spirit, and food and wellness all plays a part. And the body wants to be healthy. You, you, we just need to be aware of what's going on here, uncover it, and then and work towards healing it. Okay, so go on. Sure. So that is you know, how things play one into the other. So the healing process, like I said, it is a process. It takes my clients three months to six months to do the healing work that we do. It is all based in, in research. Everybody is different. So I can't say, well, here's the answers because everybody is different. You know, we do work with mindset. We work with body, spirit. There's my two books, Live Beyond Your Dreams, From Fear and Doubt to Personal Power, Purpose, and Success. That's the mindset work. And Love Beyond Your Dreams, Break Free of Toxic Relationships to Have the Love You Deserve. That's the number one bestseller. Together, we do 50% life coaching, 50% love coaching, because you have to heal what's going on in the unconscious first before if you're single going out to date. Right. Now let's say, because there are so many people in my world who they're, uh, they've been betrayed and they want to heal from this betrayal relationship. And very often they were with a full blown narcissist or sociopath, psychopath. I'm, you know, I'm not sure who knows, but what do you, what's your work with someone like that? What do you suggest? It's all about healing and recognizing first part under life coaching is the healing Mm -hmm. and understanding why are they attracting that kind of person? And the research shows, like, and I really try to make this clear on every interview, falling in love with someone by chemistry is very dangerous. It totally pulls you back into your family dysfunction. You are attracting a guy that is like the opposite sex parent. So if you're a girl, the guy is you're like your father. I mean, ask yourself, did I have a personality type like my father? And it's because, again, it's what's your normal, what you were used to. And in another way, your psyche wants to heal that. Mm-hmm. but it's drawn to it. That's what the chemistry with. Oh, I recognize this. This is comfortable. We get along great. And the other thing that's really difficult, people are sociopathic because they come from deep childhood wounds. They usually have nine or 10 out of the traumas. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So they first are very loving, very charming people. And this is what throws women off. Right. You know, they give you a lot of attention, texts, phone calls, gifts, early saying, I love you. I want to be exclusive with you. And every woman that once loved said, whoa, this guy's great. Finally, somebody that's really knows how to act in a relationship. That's the beginning stage. And then from mm-hmm. four months to nine months in, when things are close and you're committed, this is when some of the stuff starts coming out. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And this is the time when a lot of women say, ah, you know, he's, but everything else is great. And just kind of snow that over. This is what we call red flags. There's 36 red flags that I teach my ladies to look for. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So again, information is key. We didn't learn any of this growing up. And like I said, I didn't even learn this in my master's program, which I mm-hmm. did at 40 years old. So all these years, we're flying by the seat of our pants until we can get this research. Yeah. And I so appreciate what you're saying. And it's interesting because in my study, and I hear you, you went back for your master's at 40. I just, I went back at 50 for this PhD. So I hear you. I, I get the work and I appreciate the work. But one thing I saw over and over and over again in my study was those red flags would come up, but we're so good at thinking and doing that we turn down the feeling and the being. So right. these flags may be coming up, but we're just turning it down because we just don't want to see. Well, we all want love. It's the basic number one human need. And we also have to realize no human is 100% perfect. They're not. And if you figure 90% of people come from childhood wounds, now we have to understand our own. We have to understand our partners. And this is how I do my couples work. Mm -hmm. When they're fighting over and over again and they're stuck in that toxic cycle of, you know, angry love, angry love, you know, Mm -hmm. domestic violence uh, cycle, then, you know, they have to understand what were the original wounds and how do you communicate through it. So it's a whole new style of communication with your partner as well. So you Mm -hmm. don't overlook them. You bring them up and there's a way to communicate through them. So nobody feels blamed or personally attacked, but you work from a team point of view. Right. And what happens if they don't heal from their traumas? Well, this is what we are seeing in today's crazy world. (laughs) This huge, huge hookup culture. And unfortunately, a lot of women are buying into it. First date, second date, they're sleeping around. 
you know, I, I hear from my friends, my God, Rihanna, if you don't sleep with a guy on the third date, they just dump you and walk away because they think, well, I'm not going to buy her another dinner. I'm like, are you kidding me? Wow. Like, are, are they that shallow at this point? You know, so there are ways to find emotionally healthy, evolved and conscious partners. And this is the other technique I teach. Like, where are they? How do you find them? And how do you stay away from buying in to the rules that are ridiculous? Like, okay, and if he really likes you, the fifth date, but after the fifth date, forget it. You know, I mean, I'm like, are you serious? What men made these rules up? Right. <laughs> now I'm living in Florida and I'm hearing this all the time. I'm like, this is ridiculous. I see it with the younger generation. It just oh, doesn't seem to yeah. matter. Yeah. I mean, I have younger and older people, you know, I have from 20s up to my oldest client was 73. So it, it is rampant, the hookup culture, and it's dangerous. It really is. And it's everyone's just using everybody else. And I think a lot of the women are hoping for the best and using sex for love. Then the love doesn't come, then they're hurt. And they're like, well, what did I do wrong? You know, there's a lot to work around. It sounds like there's just a lot of healing that needs to happen. And until then, yeah. it's just, we're filling a void that just can't be filled with anything external. Any last thing you want to make sure we cover before we wrap up? Uh, well, um, I would just like to say a little bit about, you know, if you want more information, my podcast is Lessons in Life and Love. All the archives are on lessonsinlifeandlove.com or on Spotify. And I do a live radio show on Bold Brave Media every Monday night to answer your questions. But if you want to work, work with me one-on-one, uh, -on -one, I do give your listeners a free life and love transformation discovery session and bring your list. Now, if you were running around or driving, you couldn't make the list, I have a free ebook and it's easy to remember, havetheloveyoudeserve.com. Okay. And that gives you the free ebook that will again go over the 10 childhood traumas. Do that. Set up a time with me. Just go to my website, rihannamilne.com, and the pop-up form will be there where you can set up a free one hour with me. It's a $500 value, and I give it to the first seven people that sign up. Oh, wonderful. So. And I'm going to have everything in the show notes. Rihanna, I want to thank you so much for your time. This definitely shed uh, lots of light on people struggling to find love and, and maybe the reasons why they're experiencing certain things with their partners and what they can do about it. So. Absolutely. I just want to encourage everyone that it's never too late. You know, it, the time is now because life is short. It's time to have a life you desire and the love that you deserve. Absolutely. Thanks so much. Thank you, Debbie. Such great information. Rihanna shed so much light on human behavior. We're both a fan of creating awareness in order to change something. And I hope you have lots more clarity around behaviors you just haven't been able to make sense of. Rihanna has been so kind to offer you lots of ways to connect with her through her podcast and radio show, her books and more. I'll have all the links in the show notes at pbtinstitute.com forward slash podcast. So be sure to check it out. So here's my biggest takeaway. Although it doesn't excuse it at all, knowing that our childhood traumas follow us until they're healed helps us understand the work we need to do and the reasons why we choose who we choose. So give yourself lots of compassion as you take on these subconscious behaviors that have been with you forever. Heal them and you'll see that you'll attract entirely different types of people into your life. And while we're speaking of that, I mentioned the idea of your biggest crisis reveals your greatest gift, which you can go ahead and find over at pbtinstitute.com and let us support you. Go to Facebook and join our group, Women Hacking Betrayal, where we give information, tools and support to help you move forward and heal once and for all. Can't wait to be with you next time. And here's to your breakthrough. <laughs>